Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Jackie Ina, aka Jackie O. It's been a while since I just sat down, did makeup, chatted with you guys, updated you on life, you know, this, that, family, babies, kids, marriage, horses, carriages, all the good stuff. The star of the show is the Better Than Sex Mascara from Too Faced, so I'm gonna be partnering with them to feature it in today's video. And I'm pretty much just gonna be giving you a full face look. I have someplace special to go to this evening, so I figured I would just do a getting ready glam with you guys while I just chat about life. Now, you know how this goes. If you are watching my videos and if you got this far, you might as well subscribe. I mean, I just don't understand you you might as well, okay? The button is right down there or there. I don't know. It's not my business. Just take care of it, okay? Thank you. I got the Clover palette in the mail today and it definitely got some peaked interest on Twitter. So today I'm gonna be using that because I'm gonna be wearing this camo green top and I kind of want something smoky, slightly smoky and a little bit of sultry with a red lip. I've been wearing red lips a lot lately. I have no clue why. I think reds are my new nude. I don't know what's gotten into me. I'm gonna be taking my Hourglass Mineral Veil. You don't have to use this one if you don't have it on hand. It's just that I'm gonna be using some Hourglass foundations a little bit later. And I'm just gonna be rubbing that into the skin. Don't mind the first initial layer of ash. That blends in after we add the foundation. Now, just in case you were thinking about judging the purple ash layer of this, primer remember it is october okay halloween month i'm just saying it could be a potential look i remember last year when i did that beetlejuice look and i intentionally made myself super ashy like corpse like and people were commenting on the look saying your foundation doesn't match and that's when i knew halloween wasn't for me because it was like that was the point that it's beetlejuice that was the moving forward i'm gonna be using my beauty bakery flower powder it's just a yellow powder that I will be putting on a light layer of before we add the foundations. This keeps me matte throughout the day and it also just makes sure that the makeup lasts a lot longer. Right now it's 3.30, I have an event at seven and then I have a dinner to go to at around 10. So I need a beat down that will stay put. Now that we've achieved level corpse bride, I'm taking Golden Almond from Hourglass, the stick foundation and I'm going in. So first things first, how about your girl got new choppers? I haven't really talked about this too much on, I think I did, I think I mentioned it one time, but I am going through the process of getting Invisalign. I'm more than halfway done with it. I don't typically wear them while I film, so if you notice that there's something different about my teeth, but you can't quite put your finger on it, it's because I've been doing Invisalign. I started in late June, July it's my fourth month and I'm done the first week of December. Total, it would have been just under five months. And even if they had told me to stop now, I'd be really happy with what my teeth look like now, just because I've never had teeth this straight. I get asked, you know, do I recommend them? I, I mean, I do just based on my personal experience. I would much rather have done this versus braces. I don't think my teeth were, were severe enough for braces, if that's what I'm trying to say. Every single time I went to the dentist when I was a kid, I would like pray, please, please, please give me braces, please give me braces. And they all said I didn't need them. So it was like a huge, you know, like a letdown because it's like my teeth aren't perfect, but obviously they aren't bad enough to get braces. So I just kind of dealt with it. And I don't really feel like in my case, getting Invisalign was a need. It was definitely a want, but I'm so glad that I did it. In case you didn't know, because you wouldn't know this because I'm good at like, showing my angles for the most part. This tooth right here stuck all the way out to the point where like I couldn't even smile on this side of my face because if I did, it would literally like be facing, it would be saluting you from this way, okay? Instead of lining up with the rest of my teeth, if I smile to the side, it would be like boop this way, okay? Not cute. Obviously I'm not trying to be smiling, you know, for the kids, for the camera looking buck tooth. So I would always smile on this side and you wouldn't see it as often, it wasn't as obvious. I just paid out of pocket and I've been really, really, really diligent with it because of that. So, you know, like when you when you pay for something yourself, when you invest in something yourself, you're more likely to be more serious about it, okay? That was me. If I hadn't have done the Excelident, which is a device that you're supposed to wear 20 minutes a day, it vibrates your teeth. So every single day you wear this device and it makes your teeth move and shift quicker. If I hadn't have got that on top of the Invisalign, the program I would have been on would have been like, I think probably just under a year, probably about 10 months. 
So the Excelident cuts that time in half. And I change my trays out every week and this is getting really tedious, I know, but I know people had questions about like how the experience was and everything. I'm gonna take two other Hourglass foundations. This is what I do when I want my face like beat, like capital beat. I'm gonna take Espresso just underneath my cheekbones, my jawline to contour and my five head because you know she does need a little bit of shaping, a little bit of assistance. Don't be ashamed of the five head gang. And then I'm gonna take Golden Almond. So my all over shade, no wait, yeah. My all over shade is Golden Almond. So that was what I used for my base. And then Warm Almond I take under eye to help conceal. And then in the center of my face, I'm taking my NYX HD Concealer to highlight the forehead. This is such a good concealer. And I wanna say that it's slept on, but it's not because I feel like I was the one who discovered it late. So I can't even really take credit for being the one that put it on the map. I didn't at all. Lately, I don't know, I've just been really, really liking the way that my skin looks, even though she's not perfect. Don't get it twisted, she is not perfect. I've just been trying to work with what I got more and letting my natural skin from within show through. Can I also just say thank you so much to everyone who has been so, so supportive of the announcement of my Too Faced collaboration. If you have not seen it, you have to see it on my previous video. But basically, I'm going to be working with Too Faced to expand their line of Born This Way foundations. I recently announced it to my YouTube channel in a previous video, but you guys had obviously known about the news since August when I first announced it on Instagram. I can't thank you guys enough. Like the opportunities that I get and the stuff that I have yet to even unveil and reveal to you guys, first of all, are beyond exciting. Like I can't even put into words how exciting it is to, to say I got to create something or to say I got to put my name on something. I think for so long, I put so much importance on who so-and-so is collabing with. And you know, collaborations, I think in a lot of ways, not just for me, are looked at as like the measure of one's success. What I wanna say to that is don't look at them as like being the make or break, you know, because you can be very successful, very successful, extremely successful, and not necessarily ever work with a Sephora brand company you know you may not even ever make it to a support that doesn't mean anything and don't get me wrong not to take away from those opportunities in any way shape or form they're amazing opportunities but I think that sometimes we get so caught up in focusing on but when am I gonna get that and when am I gonna get that and it's okay to have a goal I think it's wonderful having a goal but I think that you have to look at the bigger picture like what does a collaboration mean to you? What is important about that collaboration? What do you want to do? How do you want to help people? Do you want to help people? What is that going to do for other people? How are you serving the community? To me, the opportunity to work with Too Faced was unlike any other thing that I got to do, simply because it was like, and I, t I know I talked about this in my other video, but this is more chatty, so don't mind if I do. I just felt like this is so true to what I'm doing, and this is just the coolest thing that anyone's even ever thought like they made this for me it didn't feel like and I've had this happen before but you know I've turned on opportunities where I felt like they just needed a quota they just needed someone to put their name on the product and then you know when it came down to I would love to do this I have different ideas you know it was very like take it or leave it <laughs> and you know businesses are just that they're businesses they're here to make money it's just nice that this felt like it was for me. It was unique to me. It was created for me. I know that they could have still done it without me, but it was just nice that they saw something in me and they were like, you know, anyone can do this, but we want Jackie. And that felt really good to me just because, like I said, I think that we put a lot of self-worth in ourselves in what we're doing and how we're collaborating with brands. And I kind of felt like I was being passed up and, and I wasn't getting the opportunities that I felt I deserved. Don't get me wrong, I was still working on other things, but when this came along, it was just like, oh my God, this is really cool. This could be huge. It's just nice for once doing a collaboration that in my opinion is a way to give back to other people and something that doesn't necessarily benefit me. Other people in my community can look at it and be like, oh my God, she helped create something that makes me feel beautiful, you know? I started my YouTube channel not because I thought being a black woman I'm better than because 
I do get those comments a lot. You'd be surprised. You would be surprised. I'm taking my NYX HD concealer now, by the way. I mean, it's actually really sad how many comments I get from people that say, why do you only care about black people? And they're serious too. I made this channel because I felt like there just wasn't a lot of content for people who look like me. And the content that was out there wasn't always very positive, you know? And you know, and not even just not even just on YouTube, just in mainstream media, you know, you know what the black girl stereotype is. We all know what it is. When I announced this collaboration, I guess it was just so interesting to see how people thought, like, oh well, you only care about so and so. Like, first of all, first of all, we shouldn't look at it that way. Like, we shouldn't even you have to remember that. Being dark skin is not mainstream. And I had the opportunity to create something for a group of people who are often overlooked. And you can't think of it like, oh, well, she only thinks about like, well, that's because no one else does most of the time. So I'm just grateful that Too Faced gave me that opportunity. And I am grateful that I know that most people get it, get, or maybe they just don't understand in general why I do what I do. Just because you're pro-black, it does not mean you're anti everything else. That's the first thing. Second of all, I empower people of color and people of color does not just embody black people. That, that also includes Asian people. That also includes Latin people that deal with colorism and have dark skin people in their community too. And I make videos for everyone, not just people my complexion. But is it my priority? Absolutely, because as you can see, there's still not very w many women or men of color that look like me, that are dark like me. So I mean, how can you get mad at that? I mean, I just, I don't understand, but in a lot of ways, I just try to be as patient. I mean, it's, it's very frustrating because I'm constantly feeling like I have to defend myself in a way that other people don't. Like no one ever says comments like that to other YouTubers. Like you don't go on videos for fair skin and say, what about dark skin people? Like you don't do that. So I mean, what's really the tea? Now going back to my beauty bakery powder and we're gonna bake, we're gonna bake it up. So the frustrating thing I think about being a woman of color, being a person of color is that people expect me to be the voice of everyone even when it's not reciprocated. Not only one is that hurtful and damaging, okay, but it's just, downright disrespectful because you have never ever come to my channel and heard me say anything out of pocket, disrespectful, anti anything that's not dark skin, you know? So I don't, I don't understand where this whole, like you only care about one and not the other group comes from. Yes, I, I realize that dark skin people are not the only ones that have a hard time finding foundations. Do I think we're at an unfair disadvantage though? Absolutely. Do I think the scales are even? No, the, the comparison's not equal. I, it's just hard because my channel doesn't speak to the majority, you know, the default. And because of that, I think people take it as you're anti, you're anti. And it's like, but I'm not, I've never even, never so, what? I'm not gonna zoom in too, too close for the eyes just because I feel like that's kind of weird to do a chit chat and you're like in my eyeball. Okay, Clover, let's see what you got. Cuddle Buddy, which is this shade right here. And I'm blending that into my crease. I don't know why I'm so messy. There's powder everywhere. I don't understand. Cuddle Buddy, was that Cuddle? That was Cuddle Buddy. Cuddle Buddy, I'm blending on the outer corner of my eye. She's very pigmented. So I'm just sweeping her out just on the outside. I don't think I wanna go in. I like what this is doing with my eye shape right now. So I'm just gonna keep it out. So how are they plans? I don't really know, y'all. I just don't be in Halloween like that. I don't know yet. Dennis and I definitely have costume ideas, but it's just a matter of following through with them and being persistent. But he came up with something, actually it was some of you guys who came up with some dope ideas on Twitter. One of which we are going to be using it's really cute. We don't usually do Halloween, but I think since this year, since you guys see more of that kind of stuff, for me, it's like, why not? Not really typically. I'm not typically into Halloween because it's just a lot. It's just a lot. But this year we're gonna actually try to get turned. This is looking like a really good crease color right now. While we're here, I'm gonna take it and just blend it along my bottom lash line. I wanted the look to be kind of mauve and also some smoky greens because I'm gonna be wearing this top. I'm gonna be wearing camo. Best Friends though kind of bangs. Best Friends is a really nice like duochrome blue purple. She's a banger, I'm gonna go for it. So I'm just popping that onto my lid. I may put another color on top to kind of tone down. I, I really don't want 
I don't want teal to be like the focal point of the eye look. I want it to be more, not this, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm just, just kind of creative because I have to remember I'm wearing a red lip. What am I doing? Okay, we're gonna take ro ro ro. -ro. <laughs> That's cute. I guess that's supposed to mean hello in dog language, but Ruro in this color here. And I'm gonna put that, ooh, that's really pretty. So that's got more purple in it. Just putting that right on top. Sometimes when you layer shimmer shadows, they start looking all muddy, but that's not happening here. Just because I think the undertone of these colors are working together really nice. But you have to be careful when you're doing this. Y'all, I get the baby question like every other day and I'm so over it. I can't, like I really can't, I can't. My family and friends know better, but like I really can't. Why do people ask that question? It's too much. The baby question, when are you having babies? I, if I knew, don't you think God would have told me if I knew? I don't know. It's a lot. I know that people mean well, but I've just learned a long time ago, like that's just a no-no question because you never know. You never know what someone's dealing with privately. Like you don't know if they're trying to have kids and they're struggling through having kids. You know, that that question could trigger some emotion, so I just know not to ask it. And now I'm at that age where people see me with a man and they think it's the appropriate thing to ask and I just don't think it is at all. I think it's the opposite. You know, like that's not, as a woman, that's not the only thing that I want you to be interested. You know, like what about my career? Like ask me how my family's doing. Ask me how we're doing. Like, what? oh, what's your next career move? You know, what's in store for your future? You know, but this whole like, y'all it's time to have babies and kids things weird. Like it's weird to me. I don't know what, it's weird. I just don't believe in asking questions that have everything to do with God's timing and not me, you know? Plus, I don't even want kids right now. So it's like, why would you even ask me that, you know? Why, you know? And then you have to tell them, then they want an explanation. Like, I, don't, I just don't want them right now. Just leave me alone. My ovaries are fine. My uterus is a-okay. We're doing great. You know, when it's that time, I'll let you know. But right now, stop it. Okay, stop. No, really stop. If I get a paper cut, I don't want you to think it's a sign, okay? If I'm wearing highlighter, don't tell me I'm glowing. Wink, wink. It's, it's cool, man. We're, we're, we're good. I'm always glowing. I'm glowing because I'm a child of God. That's why I'm glowing, okay? But you know, like I told you, once there's a man in the picture, they just think everything is open for discussion and it, it, it ain't. Okay, Suzanne from Trader Joe's, it's not. Okay, now I'm doing black liquid liner. Do I want black? I'm already doing it. Okay, too late. Let me tell you something, girls. And guys, once you turn 30, everything pops off. And I felt like at 28, I was mentally preparing myself for this, but I've never been more happy. I've never felt more liberated. My career is going amazing. My relationship's going amazing. My family is dysfunctional, but everybody who's meant to be here is here. And everybody who's not is not, and it feels so good. It feels amazing. And I just want to enjoy that for as long as I possibly can. These eye colors are giving me ooh, something sultry. I might have to change my lip color because we were going to do red. Mm -mm, this is not a red kind of look. Anyway, it's better than sex time. AKA the number one selling <laughs> This is the number one selling prestige mascara in America. And I'm a proud contributor to that statistic because I've bought like 20 of these. Today, I am going to be wearing falsies with this look because we're going out but with or without, I always go in with this mascara first just because it gets the job done quicker. And I was dropping some mascara bombs in the last video that I did. You guys should definitely check it out. It will probably be an in card video. And you know what, I'll just put like a little card up here so you can find it and see it. I gave you guys a lot of my tips on how I like to do my, my natural lashes because you know, some people struggle with getting the mascara all over their eyes. Sometimes they get it on their cheeks. And I feel like I've kind of like mastered how to get the best lashes with mascara. I was dropping the gym, so you guys have to check out that tutorial. This is the Emerald Lash from La Page Trends, one of my favorite lashes at the moment. I've already stocked up. They're super thick, super out there, and I've already stocked up on them. So, so don't even try to outbuy me, okay? Because it ain't gonna happen. I'm actually gonna put the falsies on last. I can't believe I've become that person that's now excited about the holidays like I used to be such a bomb bug and then I don't know what took over me I have no idea like all of a sudden I'm buying Christmas decor in September you know we're doing the ugly sweater parties and all that good stuff I, I, don't, I don't know what came I I don't know what came over me honestly I have no idea to contour I don't usually contour you guys notice I usually bronze but tonight I need to be snatched okay 
been eating a lot of pizza lately, so I need to chill. Anyway, I'm just gonna go around the perimeter of my face and shave it all away. Shave it all away. I love me a good contour, I really do, just not during the day, you know, it's just a lot to wear. But when I'm going out at night though, I will bust them out just because I feel like sometimes bronzer on its own isn't like strong enough for nighttime photos and stuff. Now we're gonna do bottom mascara. Remember, always tilt that head down, keep it off your cheeks. But if you want more tips though, you have to check out video number one. I'm going back to the Clover palette and I'm gonna take Something about this green is just calling my name right now. We're wearing camo and we're wearing green later. So it's called Lucky Clover. I'm gonna pop that on the inner corner. Ooh, that's a fun color, that's perfect. So I got back from New York yesterday and I found this CVS Walgreens, one of them. And I rarely ever see Milani in stores. So when I do, I usually run because I love Milani, especially their blushes. And I picked up the Rose Dioro, Rose Dioro, I don't know, baked powder blush and it looked really pretty. I just hope it's not too, too light and too, oh, this is a really pretty like peach color. Oh, it's so pretty. This is the perfect blush. It's perfect. Are you guys experiencing what I'm experiencing right now? Cause I'm going through all of it. I'm now highlighting. I'm now wearing some highlighter. Can't say what it is yet. Okay, so since we decided to scrap the red, I instead grabbed a more purpley red and it's a little bit darker. This is from Colored Rain and it's in the color Mary. Mary, Mary, she's so scary. Oh, this is so pretty. Oh yeah, this is much better with the look. Ooh, ooh, I almost forgot about lashes. Let's grab the lashes. I did my lashes, but we had a death in the family. Um, Emerald decided that she wanted to go on to be with the Lord. And by that, I mean, I accidentally broke it. I, 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 I killed her. I killed Emerald. I killed Emerald, I'm so sad. So instead I grabbed Rosie, which I think actually looks a little bit more appropriate for the look. It's not as out there as Emerald. And that's the completed look. I love you guys. Thank you again for watching. Thank you to Too Faced for partnering with me for this video. Please check out the first video with all the tips all the tea on how I like to apply my mascara to get popping lashes, okay? I tried to figure out how many influencer collabs I can do all in one video. Okay, so check it out. Don't leave yet. You're not done here. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.